Hey guys, Ivan here, and in today's video we got a couple of very interesting bodybuilding updates. The first one, as you can see, is about Andrew Jacked. So he posted a couple of interesting photos in which he is looking enormous. Super, super freaking big, bigger than ever by far. And you guys also probably know that he was supposed to compete at the Dubai Pro this year, but he pulled out, and then there was talk that he is doing... Texas Pro again this year. I don't know where he announced that. If you guys know, tell me down below in the comment section. But from what I'm seeing from him, I don't know, man. He doesn't look like he's prepping. Again, you can see how massive this guy is right now. But as far as conditioning for the past couple of weeks, and it's been three weeks since that uh, guest posing in Pittsburgh, I don't think his conditioning changed at all. Not even one bit, if you ask me. And Texas Pro is in 9 weeks from now. Can he be conditioned enough in 9 weeks? I don't think so, I really don't think so. So I'm guessing he's gonna take this year off and focus on next year, 2025, and try to qualify for the Mr. Olympia and then do some serious damage, which I think makes a lot of sense taking this entire year off and focusing on growing, because I think he really did a great job growing, but if he starts cutting immediately, he's probably gonna lose a lot of that new tissue. But if he keeps it for a year, it's much more likely to stay if he keeps it for a year. And in the caption here he says, making each second of grind count as I compete against my previous self, which is, you know, always the case, but I think this year he is really serious about this. Here's another photo, check out his arms, I mean, what the hell? This is Samson Dowd a level of size now, you know, he was definitely smaller than Samson before, but after this offseason, I think he got to that point, or at least he's much closer now than he was last year, for example, so he definitely did progress, and probably the biggest criticism that he was receiving was aside from the overall size and thickness and density, it was his arms. Even though his biceps are super peaky and his triceps are as well, kind of, he still wasn't full enough in the arms. He kind of looked a little bit stringy because his arms are super long and it's not that easy to fill them out. I mean, Samson did it. He's about the same height, maybe a little bit shorter. But having full and big arms at that height, I mean, Samson is not exactly known for his arms. I mean, look at Nick Walker's arms, and the biceps especially, much different from Samson's. So Samson's arms are also kind of flatter, but, you know, Andrew Jack, he's, they're not, they're smaller than Samson's, but they have better peaks. So Andrew just needed to make them bigger, fuller, rounder, and, I mean, we don't know what he's gonna look like on stage yet, but based on these physique updates in the off-season... I think he definitely made a lot of progress, especially in the arms. Look at him right here, how big and full they are. I think this year we're gonna see a completely new version of Andrew Jacked. Actually, sorry, not this year, probably next year. And here is what his physique looked like three weeks ago. So this was 12 weeks out of Texas Pro, which he is supposed to be doing this year. I mean, is this good for 12 weeks out? Like... Yeah, sure, he can probably, he could probably make it, but it's not ideal. This is more like 20, 25 weeks out of slowly losing the body fat and keeping all the tissue on him while dieting the fat off. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know where he said that, uh, who said it even, but I heard people saying that he's doing Texas Pro, and I don't think that's the case. But, yeah, the improvements are definitely made. He finally did what he was always supposed to do. He was competing show after show, season after season, he didn't take any breaks, and he progressed, even like that, he still progressed, but he could have made more progress if he took an off-season, probably, probably, because after seeing what he looks like right now, how much he blew up in this off-season, yeah, I definitely think it's the right call, and I think the best idea for him would be to take the rest of the year off, compete next year, put on some more muscle, take a long time to prep so he doesn't lose any muscle, just gets sharp, really sharp, if you added muscle, it's gonna be crazy, I think this guy has potential to be top 3 of the Mr. Olympia next year, what do you guys think, tell me down below, alright, next up, we got a physique update from Stefan Matala, who is 11 pounds out of his classic physique, 
weight limit so as patrick tour here says extra flat mode is on this is what he looks like when he's flat and you can see it it's a video i'm gonna show the video to you in a second but you can see that he doesn't have the same pop the same fullness as he does when he's not exactly pushing super hard now i mean he's already pretty much conditioned enough you're gonna see from behind like he's there conditioning is pretty much done if you ask me but he still has 11 pounds to lose is he gonna lose the, the lines, the fullness, the, 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 the look that he has because he has to make the weight? That's the question. He is definitely somebody who can consider competing in the Open in the future. But this time around, yeah, he's gonna make the weight for Classic. He can make the weight, no problem. But, you know, the question is, once again, is his physique gonna look its best in Classic physique? Look at this. Look at the conditioning in the lower back, in the glutes, and the hamstrings. Like, everything is dialed in. He is in condition already, but he has to lose another 10 or actually 11 pounds, which is not ideal. It's not ideal. He's not going to be looking as good as he could. I'm pretty sure about that. But still, still, if he somehow, you know, loses the weight and doesn't lose a lot of muscle and then manages between the wings and the show itself to bring up the fullness as much as possible then yeah, he can be very, very dominant because, you know, he's definitely going to be on the bigger side next time he competes. But overall, his physique, this guy looks phenomenal right now for classic physique. From all the other popular classic physique guys who turned pro, who uh, qualify for the Mr. Olympia this year, like Jose Manuel, like uh, this guy, and there are others as well. Uh, Stefan Matala is my favorite to be one of the top 8 guys at the Mr. Olympia this year. I like his structure, I like his shape, I mean, with his freaking roundness in the arms and shoulders, he reminds me of uh, Kevin Levroni, and just overall, he has a really good classic shape, but, you know, with those bubbly round muscles, so it's gonna be very interesting to see him on that stage, hopefully the amount of detail is gonna match, you know, his, his structure and shape, because, you know, to be very competitive at the Mr. Olympia especially, you need to have crazy detail. For example, Jose Manuel has crazy freaking lines, especially the glutes and hamstrings. I don't think Stefan has that as much, but he has crazy shape, man, crazy shape. So, yeah, I have high hopes for this guy. What do you guys think? Alright, next up, we got a physique update from Nathan Diasha at the Magic Door. <laughs> actually, this is Kuwait uh, Oxygen Gym, actually, and this is the door where Brandon Curry used to take photos. You know, the combination of natural lighting and the dark background and, you know, taking the photos from this angle below the stairs, it's just a really good spot to take photos and videos at. And uh, Nathan Diasha is competing in four weeks from now maybe in three weeks as well i'm not sure i know he's doing italy show i'm not sure about spain because in three weeks from now we have Ampro cup spain you know Crisio, becruz tabani uh, william bonek and sas Hirati. maybe nathan diasha jumps into that show as well that would be freaking amazing but i know he's doing italy that's in four weeks and some of these guys might also do the Italy, so those two shows are going to be amazing. We also have another show in Italy, also a pro show, but it's later, in September. And a week after that, we have uh, UK. And those two shows are going to be done by Hunter Labrada. And I don't know who else, but as far as these shows, in three and four weeks, we have Nathan and all the other guys I just mentioned. So Nathan right now looks, I would say, his absolute best ever. I don't know if he ever looked better, and you guys know his coach is Stefan Kinzel, the boss of Outlaw, and these guys are doing phenomenal. Even last year, Nathan was really good, but it seems like in the offseason, he was driven, probably more than ever in his career. I don't know if he ever really tried so hard to put on muscle. I mean, he probably did back when he was coming up, but since I've been following him, no, he was kind of more relaxed in the offseason, but this year he took it seriously, and I think he progressed. Even at this point in his career, he made progress, especially in his legs, in my opinion. But as you can see, his conditioning is looking crazy already, and he has four more weeks, actually three more weeks, to dial it in completely, but he's pretty much ready. He doesn't, he doesn't need to get any more condition from this point. The question is really whether he's going to be able to travel to the US, and he most likely won't be able to because he hasn't been for all these years because of his legal issues, but... You guys know that he always qualifies, he wins a couple of shows usually, he dominates the European shows, but never gets to the Mr. Olympia, and it's such a shame, 
He's definitely a top 10 guy, probably more like 8, somewhere around there. Uh, we'll see maybe this year it's gonna be different, I hope so, but as of right now, he looks amazing, he looks improved, really conditioned, and in my opinion, he's winning the Italy Pro Show, unless William Bonac shows up looking crazy, or Michael Krizia does, or I don't know, Sas Hirati, Bekros Tabani, we'll see, it's gonna be very interesting, actually, in a couple of weeks. And real quickly for the end, we have a training video of Mikel Grigio and Rubiel Mosquera. And it's interesting because Grigio's video of uh, criticizing Rubiel, you know, talking some smack about his physique went kind of viral. You guys probably remember when he said it, he doesn't like how big his neck is, uh, that his legs are too big, he doesn't have the nice structure and so on. He doesn't like his physique, he's overrated, blah blah blah. Their rivalry actually started back in AVB Elite Pro. I mean, not really. Krizio was at the top back then and Rubiel was like top 5 guy. But yeah, they were competing against each other back then and that kind of continued now in the Pro League. And as you can see, they're both sponsored by the same company, so they're training together. But I think you can see a little bit in Krizio's face that he's not really happy that he has to train with this guy. <laughs> it seems like he doesn't like him very much, but I'm just guessing, I'm just speculating, I'm just having fun. It's nothing serious. <laughs> Anyways, guys, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up for more content about bodybuilding like this. Subscribe to this channel, guys. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon. All the best and bye-bye.